Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be looking at assembling this. So, I've been watching this on Thingiverse for a little while, and I decided, uh, hey, now's a good time as ever to go ahead and build it. Uh, what is it? Well, it's a turbine. It's a turbine fan system. And one of the things, growing up in the 60s, um, you, I guess you could say I grew up in the space age, the jet age, I was fascinated then with everything turbine, you know, anything that dealt with compressors, jets. Um, when I grew older, I loved the concept of uh, fluid dynamics and that, and while I did end up working with that a little bit in life, it was in a whole different area. But uh, anyways, I, I still have this love of turbines and the concept of turbines and um, you know, again, from the 60s and the jet engines and the, the dream of turbine-based cars and the efficiency, you'd have the engine the size of a bread box because of turbine technology and all that was great stuff. Um, so, hey, but today I've got a 3D printer, so I can go ahead and build this. So, I, I found this on Thingiverse, and I've been watching it for a little bit, and I decided to go ahead and, and build it. Now, I did modify this a little bit because... The Thingiverse build didn't make too much sense. But hey, I tell you what, before I get into too much of this, let's go take a little quick watch at a time lapse of some of the key parts of this being printed. Then what we'll do is we'll come back to the bench, we'll you know talk a little bit more about the pieces and how they fit together, and we'll actually build it. So let's get to a time lapse. Okay, welcome back. So uh, in the time lapse, we saw how the impeller uh, was printed. We also took a look at the actual housing. Now, one of the things about the housing, I've it actually took me about three tries to print this. It's actually a little bit complex in the fact of um, it has these veins inside because what happens is this impeller sits in here and sucks the air in this Venturi that I modified, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and then blows it out the back here. Um, uh, you know, so there's there's a lot of retraction that has to take place at very short distances. Now, um, for some reason, when I would go to print it, I, I couldn't figure out if it was the filament or the model itself, but it would get maybe a third of the way through and then just stop extruding. So I, I actually had to go from the Wan Hao to the... Um, uh, select mini to get it to print. I'm not sure what the deal was and I've printed things since on the Wanhao just fine. So uh, I, I don't know. I've run into a couple of those where some of the g-code is just not friendly to certain printer control boards and things like that. I'm not sure if this is the case or it's the cheap Chinese filament that I use. So one half dozen the other but I did get it printed out. Uh, with this again build suggestion you want to you want to really watch your retraction. Uh, I did get a lot of stringing between these because I think I used about three millimeters. I should have went up to about four and maybe a little bit faster to reduce some of that. It did clean up. I had to take a heat gun to it. You might notice a little piece warp to here with the heat, but that's fine for uh, this. So I, I printed uh, all this out of PLA. The impeller is uh, red PLA. Obviously black and then natural or clear for the Venturi. Now, one of the things I did is I did modify the Venturi because I'll put the link to the original. And I also put these files up on Thingiverse. Uh, the Venturi was just flat. So what I did is I duplicated it, joined it together in Tinkercad, and then cut off this end flange so it had more of a jet engine type effect. And I thought it looked cooler and probably a little bit more functional. You see I kind of had it together the... Uh, the blade somewhat does rub on the inside because one of the pieces with this, um, this blade is not super well balanced for high speed. Uh, and you can kind of see where it was rubbing against some of the inside when I was I had test fitted it uh, before the video just to make sure all this worked before showing you guys. Um, you know, so, so expect there's going to be a significant amount of vibration out of this. Um, so if I were to do this, and I probably will do this again, kind of a long story short, um, 
I do plan on putting this, I would put this on the lathe, spin it up at, at a high speed and just do a light cutting pass to kind of balance it out a little bit better. One of the things I did is I had this leftover DC motor. It's about a five or six volt DC motor and it had a gear on and I removed the gear and I, I drilled this out. Now, one of the things I wasn't able to take this into Tinkercad and my understanding from Thingiverse is this was designed on 123 Design. Um, because the file is too big, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of structure here with all of these fins and the angles and things like that. So I wasn't able to easily change the center. However, I did look, and I decided it was close enough to the gear size that, um, you know, it would work, and it, it did. I just had to ream it out a little bit with a drill. And then what I did, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but I, I wanted to try to get this as centered as possible. I used the tailstock, the dead man tailstock of the lathe, and, and, and mounted this in the lathe and used the tailstock to press this in. So it did come out pretty straight. Now, again, what I would do... Um, if I did this over again, and if I wanted to do it to be a little bit more useful, if you will, because again, I'm doing this more as a, a mock-up model and things for the video, is I would put it in the lathe, spin it up to a relatively high speed, make sure you wear safety glasses because this is just PLA, it might come apart. And that's the other thing you got to be careful about when we spin this up. It could come apart so I've already done it obviously because you can see the wear marks um, and it hasn't but that's something you have to be careful because it will get going pretty good speed so it is a little bit off balance but it's okay now I also modified this to handle about a 28 millimeter motor because what happens is the motor presses in in here and it's a pretty tight fit and then what happens is now this, uh, the, the, the motor is, the shaft is actually notched um, and it's probably going to make it difficult because uh, it's on camera. Then what happens is this, if I get this lined up here, now it wants to turn, there we go. So now it, uh, it fits in there like that. Now the other situation I saw is when I took this, when I looked at this on Thingiverse, it just, this is how it goes together. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if they, the developer intended to be, be glued or what. So what I decided to do is I created this ring as this piece falls off. It will. Uh, once it gets going, it stays on there. But So let's do that. Set it down for a second. So what I did is I created this ring in Tinkercad. And I, I turned this, this housing into a hole, differenced it out of a circle... And then I also turn this into a hole and differenced it out of the top. So what happens, and this is really a good fit, um, is now it creates so I can slide it on here. Now, one, now this was a perfect fit, really. I just did a little cleanup with sandpaper, and this snaps in. It's a good snap fit. Now, this piece was a little bit different with regards to... Um, the the housing here what i did is i actually took it on the lathe and you could do this with sandpaper too and just kind of notched out a little piece to make it easier to slide on and then what happens is it slides on like that and it all looks like this so uh, uh actually pretty cool so uh, uh this is how it uh, came out and this is how it looks so kind of looks like an air raid siren or something um I'm thinking about doing some maybe modifications to it in the future uh, about, uh, you know, making it more like a jet engine. Because I think it would be, this would be kind of cool to have it as a desk prop as, as a jet engine. Uh, but hey, we'll see. If, if, if you guys think it's really interesting, maybe I'll actually do that and build another housing that slips over here and then forms a jet housing and then takes the wires out. Uh, but hey, let me know in the comments below. So hopefully you, uh, you found this interesting. Give it a thumbs up. Wait, what? Y you want to see this run. Oh, you want the motor to actually turn. Well, okay, let's go do it. Okay, here it is with the uh, shroud removed and the fan running. Um, I'm not sure how many RPM this is turning, but uh, you know, one of the things, it's pulling quite a bit of current. Uh, to move this uh, about 3.6 amps at roughly about 6 volts uh, It's pushing quite a bit of air even without the uh, the cover piece on it 
So I wanted to show you guys it running without the cover piece and what it looks like. Now you don't want to get your fingers near that. It will hurt, so danger, danger, Will Robinson. So let's go ahead and put the uh, cover on. So here we are, we got the uh, cover on it now, and it's running. So uh, it's a little bit quieter with the co cover. It, it, it does bump a little bit of the cover. Um, you know, especially when you turn it on to its side a little bit, you'll hear it. But uh, you see it jammed, it kicked out the power supply. But uh, uh, part of the situation is it, it moves on the shaft a little bit like this. I don't know if you can see this. And when I turn it on its side, what happens is it kind of torques and then hits the side of this. What really needs to happen, and, and what I will probably do in the, um, the Thingiverse model, is extend this out a little bit further because I think this just simply needs to be further away from um, this uh, piece because what happens is you can kind of see inside it's, it's hitting against there. Now I think the other piece is too, um, you know, again, uh, as I was mentioning, if I would do this to really run or whatever to be more than just a, a desk model, I, I would put this and kind of spin this down a little bit um, to take some of the edges off or, or kind of imbal to balance it a little bit better. But uh, anyways, I think for a desk model this turned out fine and actually it's pretty pretty interesting. You know, if you have uh, kids and you want to teach them a little bit about turbines and that kind of stuff, um, this is the way to go. I probably would use maybe a little bit different motor um, than this, one with a little bit bigger shaft, because I think that's what it's really intended, because this is the original shaft size that you see, and this motor opening was, was really almost as big as this whole piece, so uh, I'm not sure what type of motor, they were very unclear about that, that they were utilizing, but if you had a longer shaft, what that would do is keep this from, from um, you know, moving as I had showed before back and forth in there like this. But anyways, for a little desk model and everything, I think this works fine. Uh, because one of the things I will do is I probably will put a touch of epoxy on this so it sticks in there. And then probably what I'll do is I'll come up with a little bit longer ring to move this away a little bit more. Uh, because remember, again, in the, in, the, in the original model, it's designed to sit flat. And I'm not sure how... That would sit sit flat. The other thing I could do, or you could do, is also print this a little bit smaller. Is just downscale it in Cura or whatever your slicer is, and make it like uh, ninety percent of the size rather than a hundred percent. And and again, I think it would give you the extra clearance you need around here. And I don't think it'd have a big effect on the performance uh, of this because again, this is kind of tight into this uh, funnel piece, as you can see because I think it's actually meant to, to difference this out. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about doing, again, if I were to do a little bit more with this, and let, let me know in the comments below if you're interested, is I would take this into uh, OpenSCAD and then create a new uh, Venturi model for it and then basically difference this out because I'm not sure if you can see. Well, actually, I can make it so you can see. Because if I take this out, no, notice that this spacing right here as it goes in, uh, I could probably make it a little bit better fitted by taking this actual model and differencing it out from here, um, giving it more of a hand and glove type fit. So again, just some kind of ideas. If you guys are, are thinking about doing it as part of this... Um, you know, channel. I, I, I'm, you know, trying to share 3D design tips and ideas, not just, you know, how to print things from Thingiverse. So, uh, hey, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. I know I did. I had a lot of fun building this. Uh, I've been working on a Tesla turbine forever and a day, and I just can't get that thing to print out, print out um, workable enough to do a video on it yet. But that's still on my list and still experimenting. But this was a lot of fun. I think I'm going to play with this a little bit more. And I think I figured out a way to make this better. So I think you'll see a follow-up video uh, on this. I haven't totally decided yet. Uh, but there's a couple pieces with this that I really like about this project that I think I'm going to uh, do in another video. So anyways, hey, if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Let me know more in the comments below if you're interested in seeing uh, me do more with this. Or if you're interested in seeing me do anything in particular, hey, hit me up in the comments below. Cheers, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.